The 2023 NFL season is over, which means it's time to cook up another mock draft. 11.0, and by the way, hit the subscribe button for that because you think any other Bears channel has hit 11 mock drafts by January 8th? I don't think so. Hit that sub button if you want more draft videos. All right, uh, here's the top 10, and what, the top 17, 18 is officially top set now? Top 18 is official. Top 18. We're focusing on 10 here because that's where the Bears pick. They pick at number one, obviously, thanks to Carolina. Uh, their own pick came in at number nine, which heading into week 18, it was going to be anywhere from 8 to 13. So that is a silver lining of losing to Green Bay. You get into the top 10 there. Um, and look, obviously, all eyes are on the number one pick. What is Ryan Poles going to do? And just remember, with these mocks, it's kind of a combination of what I think the Bears will do. Sometimes I do mock drafts of, just, hey, let's just spice it up. I think if you're asking me right now what I think Ryan Poles is going to do, I think he would probably lean toward drafting a quarterback. And so I'm going to go Caleb Williams, the USC gunslinger, at number one overall. You could go Drake May uh, here as well. But give me Williams in this spot for this mock draft. I know the chat's going to hate me. And again, I've told you guys I will make my decision on whether or not I would draft a quarterback or keep Justin Fields. This is not that decision. That will be its own video, so keep that in mind. But, again, if I'm projecting what I think polls will likely do right now on January 8th, a lot could obviously change in the next four months. I think drafting a quarterback is something he's heavily going to consider. And, look, it's not going to be an easy decision. It, it, it just isn't because there's emotions involved. There's a guy involved that is a pretty good player. Is he a top 10 quarterback? No, but could you be a playoff team moving forward with Justin Fields? I actually think you could. The question comes down to this. Do you think you can win a Super Bowl with Justin Fields? If the answer is no, and you feel like there's someone in this draft where the answer is yes, then that GM is probably going to make that switch. That's just how this works. It's not fun. It's not easy. It's not fair. Sometimes Justin Fields acknowledges, hey, Life ain't fair sometimes, man, and I don't think the Bears have handled him that well at all, but uh, I do think this will be a hard decision, and I do think there's a decent chance that they are going to take a quarterback at number one. So take a guess. Who will be the Bears' 2024 quarterback? Do you think it's going to be Justin Fields? Do you think it's going to be Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels? Not what you would do, what you think is going to happen. Answer it that way, because I know most people want Justin Fields, and I understand that. What do you think is going to happen? Pen comment, who will be the Bears quarterback next year? Round one, pick number nine, Rome Adunze. And I do think in the scenario where you take a QB number one, this is kind of the best case scenario, right? Like where you still get somebody at number nine on the outside because wide receiver is a glaring need to help DJ Moore out. You look at Adunze's past two years. Now, quick note for 2023, this is prior to the Michigan game on Monday night. So obviously those numbers could go up even a little bit higher, but 20 touchdowns the last couple of years, you know, flirting with over, you know, almost 3,000 yards and could get close to that depending on what he does against Michigan, what he did against Michigan. Uh, I like Adunze, 6'2", 6'3", good size, fluid route runner. They use him in the jet sweep game as well, which is a bit abnormal for a guy with that size and height. Uh, but he's a big time playmaker, man. Averaged almost 18 yards a catch this year. The point is, is if you go quarterback number one, you still need a top wide receiver. And if you can get Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze with your second pick, then that's a pretty good haul, man. You reset at quarterback, you get a top receiver to pair with DJ Moore, uh, you could certainly go that route. And remember, in this scenario, that means you're getting something back for Justin Fields as well. So trade alert. This is what I did with Fields. Second and third round pick from Atlanta, 43 and 74, so two top 75 picks for Justin Fields and a fifth. If you trade Fields, I think this is pretty good work here. Like, if you can get two top 75 selections, like, I think that's something, uh, if you do move on from Fields, that you could live with if you're Ryan Poles. And then you draft your center, Jackson Powers Johnson. He's been rising up boards. Many think he could be the top center in this draft. I've obviously taken Cedric Van Pran a bunch in the second, third, fourth round, but mixing it up here, Jackson Powers Johnson out of Michigan, or excuse me, Oregon, really high PFF grades. I love the pass blocking, 90.6. Uh, solid in the run block, didn't give up a sack this year, so uh, I like this addition. If you can find a long-term center in the NFL draft, 
uh, that is, that's big time because it's been a bad position for the Bears for several years now. And he's arguably the top center prospect. It's between him, Van Brand, Zach Frazier, the Duke kid who's converting from tackle to center, it sounds like. Graham Barton, uh, I believe is his name. Uh, so if you uh, could get a guy in the second, third round that could be a day one starter and at least be league average as a rookie and then you know, become a top 10 center in this league after that, uh, I think that's something that should excite Bears fans. All right, Chicago Bears Now is sponsored by LinkedIn. Guys, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL Daily. The new year is here. Every small business owner is asking themselves the same question right now. What's the one move I can make that will take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find all the right professionals for your team faster and for free. They're not just another job board at LinkedIn. LinkedIn has a vast network network of over a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many candidates, quality candidates, so easy. In fact, that listen to this, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hours. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Uh, LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. And I can attest to that. When I started at Chat Sports, we had six employees. Now we're at about 25, and we've been able to find quality candidates like Roly uh, and a lot of other uh, younger talent here at Chat Sports. Uh, thanks to LinkedIn, uh, their process is intuitive, quick, and easy. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL daily. That's linkedin.com slash NFL daily to post your job for free. Term and conditions apply. Go check out LinkedIn jobs right now. Link is in the comments and the description. Shout out to LinkedIn. Appreciate them for sponsoring today's show. All right, Peyton Wilson, who's an intriguing talent out of NC State. He's kind of a uh, tweener there, but I think his best attribute in the NFL will be coming off the edge. He's about 238, 240. We'll see where he measures in at the NFL Combine, but he did a little bit of everything for NC State last year. 138 tackles, almost 18 TFL, six sacks, three picks, six PBUs, so he's a guy who can play some coverage for you if you need him to. He's kind of an off-ball linebacker edge hybrid, uh, so he could do a little bit of everything. He's obviously not Micah Parsons, but in terms of being able to move around, he's got that versatility, and I think he could come in and you know, rotate in at Sam, be like a number three pass rusher, stuff like that. So get him as a top 75 selection, which again, you got from Atlanta in the trade. Uh, that certainly uh, would be pretty good value, I think. Jalen McMillan, why not double down on Washington receivers? They got three of them. Jalen Polk was already gone at this point, but McMillan, who I think is a guy who can be a really good slot receiver in the NFL, his numbers are a little bit down this year. He missed a few games with an injury, but Part of that is just Adunze took off. Polk has had a big year. They have a tight end that's going to be a future pro as well. He's still been solid here uh, this season, but had a 1,000-yard year last year, so he's certainly capable of putting up big numbers. And, again, this is a guy that can come in and be a number three type, right? DJ Moore, Roma Dunze, those are your top guys. Jalen McMillan, come in, play some slot. Obviously, they're going to play more in the slot some as well. Be interchangeable like all three of these guys can, and, all of a sudden, you look up, you feel like you have a really good receiver room. Tyler Scott is your number four, a potential home run threat. You feel, at least in that type of role, okay. Bayless Jones, if you want to bring him back as a gadget guy, too. Uh, EQ to round out that room, be wide receiver six, be your blocker on the outside. Uh, all of a sudden, you go from a, we got DJ Moore and not much else, to, okay, we have a pretty well-rounded room at this point. So I think doubling down at receiver in the draft is something I would definitely be looking at if I was the Bears. Shout out your favorite college football team in the comments. Maybe you are a Husky, and depending on when you're watching this, maybe you're celebrating a national championship. Uh, let me know who your college squad is down in the comments. All right, day three picks here. We won't spend as much time on these, but I think this is an interesting one. Zach Zinter, the guard out of Michigan, kind of the heart and soul of that team in a lot of ways, big-time leader. Uh, now, gruesome injury he suffered in the win over Ohio State back in late November. Broke his tibia and his fibula in that game. So that's going to be a major recovery process for the Michigan guard. But what it could do is he might slip a lot in the draft, which is obviously not great for him. But you get this guy, a, a second-round type of talent, in the fourth round here, 
he could redshirt next year, continue to recover, and then maybe he's your starting right guard in 2025. Nate Davis, unless he takes a huge step forward next year, probably gets cut before the third year of his contract. And then also, Tevin Jenkins, he is entering the final year of his rookie deal, so we don't know the future of him. So I think adding a guard for depth and a guy who has talent to be a future starter makes a ton of sense here. Tyler Davis, the defensive tackle out of Clemson, uh, about 300 pounds. I think he could be like a backup three-tech type, could play a little bit of nose for you as well. Get some depth on that defensive line. Certainly need some more bodies in the trenches on both sides of the football. Subscribe to the channel if you want more Bears draft news, rumors, mocks, player breakdowns. We're going to do it all. Obviously, this team has the number one overall pick. There will be trade buzz uh, that we're going to dive into, trade ideas. Uh, we're your hub for Chicago Bears coverage here on YouTube, so hit that subscribe button today. Okay, round six here. Remember, I traded that fifth-round pick uh, in that Justin Fields Falcons trade. Jace McClellan, who I really like. like I, I feel like someone's going to get this kid, the Alabama running back, like in the fifth, sixth round. Like, I don't think any of his measurables are going to be crazy or his speed's not going to be crazy, but I watched him play. And he just he hits the hole. He gets good yards after contact, five yards per carry this year. He was just a steady presence on that Bama uh, offense this season, and – Look, I think the Bears are going to add another running back here. They could go the route of a Derrick Henry, a Saquon Barkley, a Josh Jacobs if they want to upgrade at RB1. But if they go by committee again, maybe they just draft somebody like Jace McClellan here. So I think in the sixth round, a guy who's coming from a winning culture I think is certainly good value. And then just kind of a fun pick here, and I'll bring in Roley to chime in on this one here. The tight end out of uh, North Carolina, uh, Bryson Nesbitt, kind of a um, – I don't want to say a tweener, but like a more of a big slot. He's not going to block much, right, Roley? But 1,100 yards the past two seasons, nine touchdowns, 6'5", 240. Pretty good size there. I compared him to Dalton Kincaid almost in a fashion. Like for a the poor man's? Bills. Like, I guess a poor man's Dalton Kincaid, who won the first round last year out of Utah for Buffalo. Um, but, yeah, Drake May targeted him a ton in the red zone. Big target. They like to use him in the slot, a little slot fade going against linebackers because he's too quick for them and he's too big for safeties. I Honestly, I told you this, Harrison, as we were scripting this out. I think Nesbitt, when things are all said and done, goes closer to the fourth, fifth range than the seventh. The blocking is a concern, but he is a mismatch nightmare in the slot as a bigger tight end. Could be uh, pretty good for a tight end, too. Good hands? I'd say good hands, yeah. Good hands? Cool, yeah. I mean, value pick here. Um, I do think the Bears need to add another tight end to that room. I don't know if he's, you know, ready to be like a tight end two type, especially since he doesn't block. But could be a guy you bring in, try to develop, and uh, maybe he's a guy in, in red zone situations that could get some run. All right, there you have it. Grade today's mock draft, A, B, C, D, or F. Uh, I know some people aren't going to love going Caleb Williams number one. That's just, you know, right now what I think, you know, the Bears would probably do. But I'm sure I'll trade that pick in the next mock. It seems to just alternate here uh, as I try to keep it fresh and uh, try to mix things up here. A, B, C, D, or F. Go ahead and grade today's Bears mock draft. And again, hit that subscribe button. Whether we agree, disagree, we're going to be here every single day covering the latest Bears news and rumors. Draft content is only going to increase here on this channel. So if you want to be here for all of it, uh, don't miss out. Subscribe and tell a friend.